great and glorious Yggdrasil, whose holy heart is the symbol of all life. Today, we mourn the loss of a beloved child of Arborea. Though she came into life with another of your hallowed leaves, she departed this realm alone. May she one day return to you and bloom again upon your branches. I thank you all for gathering here today to celebrate the life of my dear sister. Even in her darkest hour, Veronica thought not of herself, but only of protecting the luminary. She was a keeper to the last. Now, I ask that each of you offer up a lock of hair to the sacred flame, that its light may guide her on her way back to the world tree. Oh, Veronica, my little angel. <laughs> Curse you, Mordigan. Why could you not have taken me instead? My darling, darling daughter, how could you leave us without saying goodbye? Serena appears steadfast despite her grief, but the sight of her poor parents is heartbreaking indeed. My child, I must speak with you and your friends. When you have a moment, please come to the cathedral. Forgive me for summoning you here at this time of sadness, but there is something I believe you will be eager to hear. You came in search of the sacred conveyance upon which Erdwin and his allies rode out to face the Dark One, did you not? How did you know that? For some days before your arrival, Holy Yggdrasil granted me another vision. I saw you, honored luminary. You were standing alongside Serena upon a great white object that transported you to an island in the sky. A strange and beautiful place. And you think this was a vision of the future? I do. For in my dream, Veronica was not with you. I have been greatly troubled as to what her absence might mean. I had hoped and prayed that my fears were unfounded, yet, alas, they were not. Which made me wonder if the conveyance upon which you stood might also be real. And then, I remembered. Cetacea. The legends tell of a divine being who soared through the skies on silver wings, a beast summoned to Erdwin's side by a mystical melody. Perhaps it was upon Cetacea's back that you rode in my vision, and perhaps the island upon which you alighted is the next step on your journey. I intend to scour the annals for indications of how she might be summoned. I will inform you forthwith if my researches should prove fruitful. Now, the day's unhappy events have surely taken their toll. Rooms have been prepared for you all at the inn. Pray, rest a while.
It's a love song from the age of heroes. The story of a lady pining for her long-lost sweetheart. No one remembers who wrote it, but I've loved it since I was a little girl. You know, something's been bothering me. Veronica? We were born at the same time, so our leaves bloomed at the same time, didn't they? Do you think they'll fall at the same time, too? Hmm, I don't know. You've always been a bit slow, to be honest. But I hope they do. <sighs> Serena, I want you to promise me something. If anything happens to me, promise you'll finish this without me. <gasps> I shan't promise anything of the sort. I don't even want to think of such things. If only I had promised to do as she asked. Perhaps she might have been able to make her sacrifice more easily. She was right, you know. I always have been slow. When it came to talking or walking or learning magic, I was always a step behind her. But now I must tread my own path. Alone. <laughs> I hate to ask, but would you mind awfully not going anywhere for a little while? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry to be such a bother, but I shan't be one any longer. Veronica died to save me. I must make the most of my life, for her sake. Hmm. <sighs> no more tears. That was the old me. Goodbye. Sister.
Good morning, or should I say good afternoon? The sun's already high in the sky. Father Benedictus dropped by earlier. He says he has something to show us at the top of the mountain. Everyone else has gone on ahead, but I thought I'd wait for you. Shall we go and join them? There's a little door to the right of the cathedral. The path is through there. There you are. So glad you could finally join us. Atrasil blessed me with another vision in the night. I saw Veronica standing upon this very ledge. It is known as Luminary's Landing. When Erdwin descended from the heavens after facing the Dark One, this is where he alighted. And this is the Calamus Flute. In my dream, Veronica played upon it. It once belonged to the great sage Serenica. She left it in Arborea on her final visit, the day after the Dark One finally fell. I gave it to Veronica as a memento of her heroic ancestor. And yet, when I awoke this morning, there it was, upon my pillow. It is a sign. The flute will reveal the path you must tread. Serena, my child, if you would be so kind. Of course. must be doing it wrong. But if Veronica was playing it in Father Benedictus's vision, it must be the key. Can you try, perhaps? The mark! It's glowing! What the? A fishing rod? I fear it is I who am seeing visions. <gasps> you got a bite! Oh, go on, darling! Reel it in!
fish. No, that's a whale. So it was as I suspected. It was upon her back that you rode in my dream. The sacred conveyance of the luminary, Cetacea. It seems that she heeds the call of the flute. You must play it whenever you require her aid. Go, Luminary, and seek out the floating island. It is the World Tree's will. Whatever awaits you there will surely aid you in the fight against the Lord of Shadows. Do not let Veronica's sacrifice be in vain. Now, play. So there really is an island in the sky, just as Father Benedictus said. I wonder if he was right about there being something helpful here too. Is that a temple of some sort? Well, there must be some reason we were brought here. Shall we go and find out what it is? <laughs> 